Okay, this is a tour of my deck garden. You see right here I have a container full of containers. This container has lilies in it. Uh, they need to be split and up potted this year. They've been in there for three years. This container, I don't remember what flowers I planted in here. They were free bulbs that I got when I ordered from an online company and I don't remember what they were. I just put them in there. Oh wait, ha <laughs> ha. I've got a Glad and Freesia. I'm not sure if that's what's coming up. Here I've got my kale that I let to flower, let go to flower. As you can see, hold on. These right here are seed pods. So I am just letting them dry out so I can harvest the seeds. And um, this is overplanted for one, but there's a couple different kinds of kale that I grew from over the winter. And I'm not sure which is which because I didn't label them. But um, there's definitely some, one of them was a kaleidoscope mix that comes, that has pink, purple, and variegated leaves. So uh, I'm really excited about getting seeds from these. And some of these were dino tree kale that I got from a YouTuber, Plant Abundance. Um, so I'm really excited about those seeds. This right here, this planter on top, this, um, I got this at Walmart, I think last year. Yeah, Walmart, it's on clearance sale. If you guys are looking for uh, affordable garden stuff, definitely check out the end of the garden season sales at places like Walmart and Home Depot. They put that stuff on clearance, pick it up, stack up for next year. So I got one of these things. These bulbs. Hold on. These bulbs are from, these are spring onions. Usually anytime I buy spring onions from the grocery store, I save them, I root them, I plant them out. This container is full of spring onions. There are a couple Tom Thumb peas that I planted in here this spring that are going to flower, but struggling. I need to fertilize these. I also had in here um, some cuttings for my stevia, but those did not make it. They failed the pull test. Over here, I've got, this is a blueberry with a lot of wild grass growing in it. Um, so you can see part of the blueberry struggled. I've got a little bee in the blueberries. Oh, nice, looks like I'm gonna get some blueberries this year, finally. This right here is stevia with grass growing in the planter. I have not cleaned up out here yet. Um, it has passed the, the pull test several times, but I haven't seen any evidence that this is still growing. And I've got these sitting on a bench. I bought benches specifically to hold planters. And also, as you can see, my little Frankenstein monstrosity, I have this plastic um, fencing up to keep the dog and the cat from jumping through the bottom of the railing. I've got solar lights on here that come on at night and twinkle everything is held on by zip ties because zip ties are magic. I've got a bunch of containers across the top of the rail. These are actually empty right now. Oh, let me move around so I can give you a better look of another one. Um, I have not planted these yet. I wanted to give them some time to see if they would hold on. And it looks like I was white, right to wait. This is not on here very securely. I need to uh, tighten this down a little bit. I actually had to cut the insides to make these stick on. Here's another little garden lesson. Always measure because I looked at these planters online and it said that they can accommodate a top rail of six inches and I went, oh, this looks like about six inches and I ordered them without measuring and about six inches is actually more than six inches and it doesn't fit so I had to get creative I had to drill some holes and uh, get some zip ties this is another situation where didn't measure this looked like about six inches these are baskets are up I only have one I've got one container in a basket but um, 
These also barely stay on and may not survive another season. Down here, I've got two blueberry plants. This one and this one. I don't remember which is which. I got them online. I up-potted them into a small container at first. And then I had, then when I up-potted them into these fabric bags, I put the cups that I had up-potted them in in the bag as a label and the label bleached out so I don't know which one is which one of them was like northern something I don't remember I have a lot of containers that are just growing either water plus whatever was in it that one was compost right there which is gonna get dumped as soon as I move my greenhouse below it that's just grass this is water on top of dirt, which will get dumped as soon as I move my greenhouse. Right here, I've got some garlic. I did a drive-by garlic exchange, or a drive-by plant exchange with my friend, Jessica. Thanks, Jessica. So um, she pulled some garlic from me, and I traded with her some sweet potato slips. And uh, hold on, you guys are gonna catch my she-beast in action. So, um, I'm sorry, that was a random detour. Uh, so, garlic, I got them, I planted them. They'll perk back up in a couple days. This is container's empty. This is some comfrey. I got this, actually, last year at a seed swap. And initially, I had split up the, the root ball. This is a green manure. And um, it's great for your compost pile. It's also great medicinally. But I initially split the root ball. I planted several in pots. When it got bigger, I um, tried to transplant some of it to, to the side of my house where the ground is very much clay and most of them died. But I kept a couple in containers, so I still have some. So I will plant them in bigger containers so I can get more for my compost bins. That's just grass. That's a pile of stuff from last year that I never put away. Uh, water cans. You guys, when I tell you I'm a hot mess um, gardener, I mean that so much. We will get back to the greenhouse in a minute. Underneath this um, container right here with the onions in it is a bag of soil under a plastic um, tote. So I had planned on doing some greens in here and using the tote to keep it warm for the winter, but I never got around to it. Um, I also needed to amend the soil because it's topsoil and topsoil can't grow greens, which is why I never got around to it. But um, in general, this is something that you can do. This is a, a valid overwintering for a small area type deal. You can get greens into the winter by covering with a plastic tote. And I will show you guys how to do that some other time. But basically, you just cut the top of the bag open, put the seeds in, grow through, grow in the bag with the toad on top. Now, my dog, my greenhouse. So this right here is the first greenhouse that I bought. And um, this is the third year that I've had it. No. Yeah, third year, I think. Um, no, this is second year. Actually, this is the second year it's been up. I did buy this three years ago. So this is a metal frame with a plastic cover. I bought this on Amazon. It was pretty cheap. And in the bottom, you can see that I've got 16 by 16 paving stones to weigh this down because I live in a very high wind area. Um... So I wanted to make sure that this thing was going to be able to handle the wind. That's why I wanted a metal frame for this one. So it can withstand. It can shimmy a little in the wind. But it's not going to fall over because I've got a good 160 pounds holding it down. Inside here is my lemon tree, which is looking kind of sad. But will be freed from the greenhouse shortly. I've got some just extra stuff that I have not put away yet. I do have a couple of, I monitor the temperature in here with um, 
those things both te take the temperature and the um, humidity from the environment so I can make sure it's not getting too hot in here. I generally like to close the greenhouse a couple hours before sunset goes down, before sunset, so I can build up a little bit more heat in here for overnight. So that's a little garden tip for you. This right here is a tiny pomegranate tree. I got this online and it did set flowers last year, but I pulled off the fruit because it was too heavy. This right here, I ordered a three-in-one citrus tree and what I got was three little tiny citrus trees in the same pot. And the instructions said leave them in the same pot. Um, they came in a tiny pot last year. I up-potted them slightly and then I up-potted them again this year, but it looks like one of them is not gonna make it. Um, the one on the left here is, is turning brown. That one's probably not gonna make it, but the other two will. And um, over here I have a lime tree. Also, same company, or order them. They came teeny tiny. I up-potted them into something slightly bigger. And then this year I up-potted them into something a lot bigger. But still not huge. You don't wanna take a small tree and up-pot it into something gigantic right away because you could shock it to death. Okay, these planters over here have weeds in them. These will, this is where I will be growing my loofah in these. So um, I tried growing them on this side of my greenhouse last year. That did not work. As you can see, the loofah decided to grow up my house instead of over the greenhouse. So this year, the loofah will go on this side of the greenhouse and it can follow the sun up over the greenhouse. And I will show you how that's gonna work out later. Um, junk, that is a planter that is crooked. Um, more comfrey more garlic, some weeds from last year. In these small bags, last year I actually planted um, a lot of kale greens and I um, planted them close together and I harvested them as baby greens. So that actually worked out. I had them in the greenhouse at the beginning of the fall. This container has sorrel in it. This is the French variety, so it's the lemony one. This particular one right here is going to seed. And I'm probably going to pull this out because I've got plenty of sorrel seed at the moment. And I don't want to take up the space with the seed. But this stuff, um, this is actually, I had this over planted and I was using this as greens for smoothies. It tastes very lemony and sour. It's delicious. It's great. I'm going to plant more of that this year. Right here. I have fennel that I also got in my um, plant drive by. This will perk back up in a couple days. This is actually pet grass that I planted for my pets and they don't eat it. Um, but I had actually left this in the little tiny cup that it came in and then I threw it in my backyard and a year later it was still growing so I decided that it earned a place in my garden whether or not they eat it. But they eat the wild grass that grows in a lot of these planters. That's why I haven't cleaned it out yet because they come up here and eat the grass. And I would rather them eat the grass than eat the weeds that were growing along my fence line last year because that made them sick. In this five gallon bucket, I don't know if you can see this, I actually had sugar cane. Last year I bought sugar cane at the grocery store and I propagated it and planted it. I did not expect any of them to grow, but all three of them did grow. Um, I didn't harvest the cane. It didn't get really big enough for that yet. Um, but these are still a little bit hanging on, so I haven't yanked them out yet. As you see, if I give it a little pull, not Hulk strength pull, but a little bit of a pull and it doesn't come out and the roots are still hanging in there, I'll leave it in for a little bit longer to see if it comes back. And then here's more of my remnants. This one, actually, all the rest of these went to flower, so I pulled them, but I left this one to see if I can get it to grow into a bigger kale. And this was a, this is a dino kale. This is, that'll be cool. And there I've got some herbs, some chives, and a bunch of weeds infiltrating, weeds, a little bit of lavender, 
more garlic. Down here I've got mint, weeds. This is actually um, horseradish. Yeah. No. Um, and there's also a ton of grass in here. Oh, wow. Maybe not grass. Look at this. Oh, it's too windy up here. It's always windy up here. This is an earth box that I um, had tomatoes in last year. As you can see, there are some baby volunteer tomatoes at the base. And I will probably dig those up and pot them up and see how they do. Um, I never cleaned this out from last year, so you can see the skeleton is pretty extensive from this tomato. <laughs> um, but I've been using earth boxes for almost 20 years. So like my first garden was one earth box and one pot of, um, they were poppies actually, poppies in a pot and uh, one earth box with tomatoes in it. And I've been using them for tomatoes ever since. They're very container friendly. They have wheels. They have a trellis system. This is metal and it works on all of them. So it's just very sturdy and I like them a lot. Um, this is more mint. I propagated more mint. You cannot plant mint in the ground because mint is extremely invasive. And then over here, I've got more onions that are just being dominated by aphids. And then I've got more onions, more Tom Thumb peas, which I planted in February. Um, and those are coming up nicely got a little bit more this is more stevia so as you can see at the very base of here let's see if I can get a better look okay so I cut these back so it was just the woody stems last year they were stevia is not hardy to my zone but we were expecting a mild winter so I was checking it out to see if it was gonna come back you can see all the little leaves at the base it's definitely growing back and I did taste test these leaves to make sure that it is actually stevia so um this has come back this was another stevia plant you see the little the red down here those are the baby leaves coming through um, i actually had four of these and i traded one to my friend and i've got the third one over there that may or may not come back and these two that are definitely back so um they will get put into a bigger container though these took off into this thing and it was just too big and then in these two pots over here are more lilies that have grass in them. And this one is getting gigantic. These need to be up potted and split because these have been uh, in these pots for, I think this is the third year as well. So they get their own pots. I initially bought them at the store and put two lilies in each pot. And now I'm going to separate them out because they're getting huge. And that is my... Uh, my deck garden which is a mess right now and um and then my animals my dog and my huntress and uh i hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into my mess and my garden and i hope you are excited to follow my adventure and see what i'm gonna grow this year bye